This video is not sponsored, but the product in this video was provided to me for free for review. Thank to all the new subscribers, the channel has crossed 2.8 thousand and I have all of you to thank for that. Today we are looking at the Blackview MP60, a mini form factor PC that could fit the bill for those looking for something new at a low price. The model provided to me by Blackview is configured with an Intel Celeron N5095, a 4-core processor released in early 2021 that has a base frequency of 2 GHz and a burst up to 2.9 GHz. Rounding out this configuration is 16 GB of low power DDR4 and a 512GB SATA M.2 drive. Connectivity is covered by Gigabit Ethernet, dual band Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth 4.2. The box is pretty nice, and along with the computer it includes a small owner's manual and a card on instructions on how to contact support, 12 volt DC power supply, HDMI cable, VESA mount adapter, and screws. A quick look at the PC shows on the side with the power button two USB 3.0 ports along with a USB 2.0 port. On the back we see the power input, another USB 2.0 port, dual HDMI ports, gigabit ethernet, a combination headphone mic jack, and a spot for a Kensington lock. The other two sides are rather unassuming, and on the top we can see black view in the same copper paint that adorns the vents. On the bottom, there is an access cover held on with two screws to access a 2.5 inch SATA expansion slot. The two slide locks allow this part to disconnect for an even slimmer PC. The expansion drive connects via USB-C port. Booting and setting up Windows was rather straightforward. Enter your username and recovery answers, a few settings and you're good to go with a vanilla install of Windows 11. Firing up Crystal Disk Info, the system drive reports 3 hours of power on, which is fairly low and nice to see. Speech checked with Crystal Disk Mark read about what I would expect from a SATA 3 SSD. CPU Z shows a little about the memory, and it's running around 2400 mega transfers per second. The benchmark came in with 265.5 single core and 1036.2 multi core. The screen capture on Cinebench doesn't look good, a product of my temporary testing setup after moving, but it scored 619 single core and 1796 multi core. Booting Ubuntu Server 2204, I had no issues with Ethernet or the Wi Fi driver. I'm including the Sysbench CPU benchmark again, as it hasn't shown issues with this line of CPUs. It registers 1,794 single core and 6,935 multi core. Geekbench 5 scored it at 688 single core and 1,919 multi core. Here's how it stacks up with other Celeron systems I've tested. Back in Windows, YouTube playback was actually pretty good. My 4K 30fps sample dropped no frames out of 2000, while my 4K 60fps sample dropped only 5 out of 2000. Reducing resolution to 1440p, it dropped 3 frames out of those 2000, and at 1080p it dropped about the same. So for YouTube playback, I think this has been one of the best results of any of the Celeron systems I've tested. Local playback of files in H.264 or VP9 at high bit rates had no issues at all. For gameplay, I still am only using widescreen Super Mario World, where I was able to maintain the 60fps and even use my Nintendo Pro controller for the Switch over Bluetooth. Getting into the device is fairly straightforward. Once you remove the expansion drive bay, on the bottom you remove the feet to reveal four screws. Inside we can see the wires going to the LED that changes from red to blue around the copper colored vents. Flipping it back around, you can see the Intac M.2 SATA SSD, which is a full 22 by 80 which means finding a replacement should be fairly easy if necessary. Also of note, there is a SATA and power port 
Not sure if those are enabled by the firmware though. The CPU cooler is held on by three screws and the paste underneath looks fairly malleable. We can also now see the two RAM chips. There's also two screws holding the motherboard onto the case and under there you can find the CMOS battery and not much else. Here are some close-up pictures of various onboard chips. The CPU does tend to run a little warm, around 52C with an ambient temperature around 20. During a Cinebench run, the temps got up to 77 degrees. Power consumption from the wall is not available at this time because I don't have my meters in yet. The BIOS is fairly open. Lots of things that could be changed, including the memory speed. I don't know enough about the chips to know if they can go any faster, so I didn't try. Overall, this mini PC looks pretty good, and fan noise seems minimal as well. With a modern CPU and 16GB of RAM, it could make for an attractive replacement for older systems at a price that shouldn't break the bank. I can't comment on gaming with it though, but it should work for emulation as demanding as playing Super Mario World widescreen. Check the description for a link and any offers that may be available at the time of publishing. As for the video quality, please bear with me as I get things set up after moving from Alaska. The first week with temperatures so low though, I couldn't tell you that I had left. Consider subscribing if you haven't already so you don't miss any of my other reviews. I still have a few mini PCs that I bought and I need to finish testing and get a video up for you to see, as well as my first low powered laptop provided by my wife. Comment below if you think the Blackview looks like a decent little machine or what your experience has been with minis. Or just comment paper below and I'll know you've made it this far. That is all for today's video. Until next time, I'm still good monkey. Thanks for watching. I hope that it wasn't terrible. <laughs> Question is, was this recording terrible? Scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling down. Whoop, not, down, not up, down, not up. I can't comment. I can't comment on the. Hmm. I can't. Hello, truck. <laughs>